My name is Brian Losgan. I'm a Principal Architect Evangelist with Microsoft Corporation, where I work on the Azure ISV team. About a year ago, I thought I would put together a little demo program that showed off the capabilities of the Azure Service Bus, specifically how to do cross-network, cross-security boundary communications between endpoints. As time went on, uh, that demo evolved, and response to it was extremely positive from everyone that saw it. Everybody loved it. It gave people ideas about what they could do with the service bus, and everybody wanted the code for it. So I decided to package this up and make it available to the community. Prior to doing so, I showed it to a colleague of mine, Tony Judici, who's a senior architect evangelist on the same team. And he was in the process of writing a book at the time, and he just he wanted to include it as part of the book so what he did was he updated it a little bit because there was a new version of the service bus that had just been released and we now had topical topic based pub sub subscriptions available to us so tony incorporated some of that into the demo then i took it back and i evolved it further so what you're looking at here is actually a, a composite of both of our efforts. This has been a year in the making, uh, off and on, and I think it does a really good job of showing off some of the things that you can do with the service bus. So I hope you enjoy this. Because there are so many moving pieces in this demo, I put together a diagram that will illustrate the relationship between the different pieces. The overarching scenario is that we have an event-based system here. A series of events are being raised. Some of them are critical or priority zero events. And when we see a priority zero event, then we want to act on it. So the first thing we have here is an event generator, and this is going to simulate our load. So it's going to publish to the service bus over a namespace that I'll show you later, a, a series of messages that say an event has occurred. We have a listener here that's listening in for all events. So regardless of what type of event it is, it gets picked up here and it gets written into a Windows Azure table. Then I've got a little web roll viewer thing that'll show you all of the events that have been captured inside of that table. If an event is critical, it follows a different path. So we've got a console application here that's sitting there waiting, 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 and it will receive, it's polling, it will receive any critical events that get published, any priority zero events that get published. Then over here, I show a line going over to the worker role. This is actually not quite what it appears to be because what happens is when this worker role starts up, what it does is it creates a couple of subscriptions. It creates this subscription over here, the all events subscription, and then it also creates a, a subscription for critical events. And the code that runs is actually in here. So when we're persisting out all of the events to the table over here, that's happening from code that exists here. And we're using push notifications here. So here we're not polling. In the console application, we were polling. <clears throat> In this case, we are not polling. Another thing that happens at this level here in the worker role code is that we also publish to the service bus using the multicast bindings, the relay bindings. So the critical events that come in here, we publish them up to the relay. And from there, they get sent out to the subscribers that have been that are listening in on those endpoints. There is a console application that's listening in. There is a WinForms listener, so it's just a WinForms app, and it displays any of the critical events that have occurred. And then we have this notion of a critical persister, and what that does is it picks up any of the critical messages that were transmitted through the relay and persists them into SQL Azure. Now there's a little bit of configuration that needs to be done here at the Azure portal. What I've done is if we take a look at service bus node, you'll see I've created a couple of namespaces here. We've got event point critical and event point topics. The distinction and difference between these two is that event point topics is used for the publish subscribe mechanism 
And you can see here that we have three subscriptions that are created. Those are the three listeners that we have set up that are listening to the pub, pub sub mechanism. In addition, I've got event point critical set up. And what that is, is that is a namespace that's used for the relay. So you cannot apparently have both of them, at least at the time that I tried this, you can't use one namespace for both purposes. Therefore, that's why I've got two set up. You can change these, as it says in the documentation that goes with the code. However, if you change these, then you also have to change them in the configuration in order for everything to keep working. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is take a look and see how this looks from the outside when we actually run it. So you're looking at five different windows here. The top leftmost window, this is our message generator. This is a test harness that will be publishing messages to the service bus. The next one over is a critical event monitor. This is a WinForms app. It uses the net event relay bindings to bring down using service bus relay bindings to bring down messages that are critical. So priority zero messages. Uh, the next window over, this shows us all of the entries that have been captured in the Azure table. So any events that have been sent through the system whatsoever, regardless of criticality, will wind up in there. <clears throat> then we have two console applications. The first one is based on uh, publish subscribe. So this is subscribing to, to a event point slash topics dash topics and listening in for there's a filter for critical messages and this one is using the relay bindings so it's picking up the multicast messages so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on the send button which will send five random messages and as luck would have it none of these messages are critical so i'm going to press it again and now we have one critical message, the one with the asterisks that you see down there. And what's happened is you'll notice that all of these listeners have picked up on that critical message. And if I refresh over here, then we'll see that there is one priority zero message and the rest will not be. That's what it looks like from the outside. You saw what it looks like schematically from a pictorial perspective. This is what it looks like from the outside world. And the next thing we'll do is we'll take a look inside and see what's going on inside. Okay, now let's take a look at a little bit of what's going on uh, from the code side inside Visual Studio. So you'll notice I've grouped the solution into three main pieces here, client, cloud, and common. So, if, and we'll go through these sequentially. So client, these are the listeners. So we've got console app, which is a listener, console app topics, which is a listener, and event point monitor, which is a listener, and then the harness to generate all of the messages to publish them to the service bus in the first place is this generate data. So we'll take a look here first. This is a console app. Um, so there's no magic here really, we're just opening up, we're creating a host, we're opening up a host. Um, you can see here that we've got critical event service, so when a message is received, we call the critical event service and register alert, and this is what happens, we just emit to the console. Going into... The topical subscription, so I'm going to show there's two different ways here that we use the pub sub mechanism. In this case, what we're doing is we're polling. So you can see we're getting a message and we're polling, we're polling, we're polling, we're polling here. Um, constantly polling and there's a timeout. So we this means that we're going to wait for five seconds to get a message. And if not, then we're going to drop through and keep on going. So this is the polling process, and in the event that we do receive a message, then we just write it out to the console, same as we did with the other one. And then if we come in here and we take a look at the code behind the form, scroll down, uh, you'll notice it's exactly the same as before, that we are, whoops, that we are creating a host. Creating a host, 
And again, critical event service, if we look at critical event service, what it's doing in this case is it's just updating the form and it's just emitting into the form the message that was received. Generate data, we're not going to take a look at. It's just basically publishing to the service bus. Look at the cloud portion. Cloud portion, uh, perhaps the most interesting piece here, and the only one that we're really going to look at, is in the worker role itself. So why I say this is interesting is because before I was showing you how we were using polling to use the pub sub and we were checking to see do you have anything, do you have anything, do you have anything. In this case what we're doing is I used NuGet to bring down the push notification uh, messaging. So there's a package, you can see it here in common, Microsoft Sample Service Bus Messaging, and that gives you the bits and pieces you need to be able to do a push notification. So basically a message is going to be received. And what we're doing is here, in this first group, we're setting up a subscription, we're creating a subscription client, and we're saying to start listening, and any time that a message is received, I want you to call this. So right to Azure Table, if we go, we take a look at that. Um, this is the one that's taking all of the messages that are received and it's writing them out to the Azure table regardless of if there are critical messages or not. So coming back up here again, let's look at the second one. The second one, this is following the same pattern here. The only difference is uh, when a message is received here, we're publishing to relay, relay listeners. And if we go to the definition for that guy, then you'll see we're calling something called SP Publisher. So we're getting the message first off, and then we're calling SP Publisher, passing through the published event message. And if we go to the definition for that, you can see here we're creating, creating a channel, and then we're publishing the message down here. So we're registering the alert, which is publishing it to the channel. And that is about it. That's all the magic uh, and that gives us all the moving pieces. The event point common that just has some common data structures in it. Uh, so there's no real magic in there. So with that, uh, let's keep moving on. So to summarize, what you've seen in this demo is how to use a service bus to be able to multicast messages. And not only did we multicast messages, but we used the relay bindings, which could potentially be crossing security and network boundaries, as well as using the topic, topical-based publish subscribe mechanism to be able to multicast to multiple subscribers. Once again, I would like to say a special thank you to Tony Judici for his input into this. And I'd like to thank you for your time and would like to remind you that all of the code is available on CodePlex. Thank you and enjoy.